Hello, this is Rob Orson with the Prince William County Historic Preservation Division. I am standing outside of a very important building here in downtown Dumfries, Williams Ordinary, otherwise known as Love's Tavern, Stagecoach Inn. Uh, it's got many different names that's been called over the years. Uh, in the background, you can hear very busy Main Street, Route 1 here in Dumfries. Uh, keep in mind, that's a very important piece of this puzzle of Dumfries. This was the original King's Highway road that ran from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way down to Charleston, South Carolina. And here in Prince William County, Dumfries, the Colonial Curve was one of the major towns in Prince William. And it was a very good spot for them to build a local tavern. Um, built in the 1790s, we believe. The original research was 1760s. But uh, a few years ago, the county performed what's called dendrochronology. What that is, that is testing the tree rings of the frame structure inside the brick building. And from that scientific research, we, we found out that the trees here that were cut for this building were cut somewhere around 1790. So this building actually is not a 1765 tavern, it's a 1790 tavern. Still a very interesting building. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna give you a virtual tour of this building. Today, this building serves as our offices for the Historic Preservation Division. So it's not something that's very easily accessible to the public. We want to give you a little behind the scenes look at some of the really cool features of this building and tell you why we think it's important and encourage you to kind of visit all of our other historic sites here in Prince William County. So I'm going to ask the camera person here to follow me up to the building and we'll chat a little bit about some of the architecture. So we made it over to the front of the building here and, and Williams Ordinary is, is very significant in Virginia history for its architecture. It has one of the rarest brick bonds you can find in Virginia. This is what we call an all-header bond. You look at the bricks, they're all the heads of the brick, which are the short ends of the bricks. Um, most brick buildings have a mixture of long and short, long and short. Um, when the architect and the builder built this building in the 1790s, they wanted to show that this building was prominent and that they had some money to build it because to use just the short end of the brick for the whole front of the building took a lot of brick. And if you could afford that brick, it gave you a sense of status. Another thing that's kind of interesting here is you can see our coins here that go up the front of the building. Anyone who's ever been to Pohick Church up in Fairfax or a quiet church in Stafford um, or Falls Church down in up in Falls Church, Virginia, You'll notice this is a very unique architecture to those buildings. This stone is from a place called Government Island in Stafford, Virginia. Uh, there was a large quarry there, and it's called a Quaya Stone because it's on the Quaya Creek. Uh, interesting enough, you can visit Government Island today. It's a Stafford County uh, park, and they have a great trail showing you all of the different quarries that this stone came from. Uh, this same stone was also used to build the White House, the U.S. Capitol, and parts of the Washington Monument. So it's a very important stone here locally. Unfortunately, though, it's a very soft stone. And so if, you, if I had the camera scan up, you can see that the stone has flaked over the last 200 years. It's a very soft stone, so it does not stand up well to the elements. Um, but a neat thing about it being soft is you can easily not encouraging this, but you can easily uh, engrave your initials or names into this stone. And this happened here in the 1860s. Um, during the American Civil War, there are several Confederate and Union soldiers posted here in Dumfries. And we have some initials from some Union soldiers from Pennsylvania and New York that actually carved their initials into the stone. And we're going to take you over and show that to you right now. All right, so we've moved over to the other side of the building. We have an easier look at some of the graffiti from the Civil War period here. Um, zoom in, you can see some of the names, initials carved in this particular stone here. Uh, keep in mind, uh, most of these, we believe, are from Union Calvary. It was posted here in December of 1862. Uh, there was a battle or skirmish of Dumfries fought between these soldiers and Jeb Stewart's Confederate soldiers. Uh, just just south of here, near the courthouse, and south near uh, mine, uh, modern day Mine Road. So, you think a lot of these guys were probably, you know, hanging around the building. There was a porch here at that time that went across the whole front of the building. So it would make it very easy to carve your name on the stone being on a porch. Um, one thing I do want to mention though, I'm not sure if Paige has zoomed up, but you can see there's also a 1900 uh, 
name here. You can see the date 1900. So at some point, um, someone had come up and engraved the, the date 1900. So it's not just Civil War graffiti, it's also graffiti from the turn of the century. At that time in 1900, this building was still a hotel. It really serves as kind of a hotel tavern from its building in 1790 up until the 1930s. Um, when a, a family, the Costello family, will buy this and turn it from a hotel into their private home. So what we're going to do now is take you inside, show you some of the historic features of the building, and show you how the Costellos kind of changed the building to make it fit their home. Hello, so now we're going to walk into the building, but before we go inside, I wanted to point out the architecture and the brick on the side of the building. As I mentioned earlier, on the front, it's all header bond. Keep in mind, this is Main Street. Um, also, I've had the camera pan to the right here, where you see Woods today and uh, northbound Route 1, the distance, that is where the seaport was. Believe it or not, in the 1790s, when this building is built, you could get large ocean-going ships right over there to northbound Route 1. So this would have been the very economic commercial center of Dumfries, so it makes sense to build this building where it is. But the front's got that all-header bond. The front faces the public. The sides and the back aren't as public-facing as the front. And so what the architect has done, instead of using the all header bond brick, he actually has some stretchers in here as well. It's very typical of most buildings at that time and most brick buildings built today have the alternating stretcher header, stretcher header bond. Um, so it's just interesting to see as you get to the side of the building, you have much less ornamentation and decoration for the building. Also a neat feature, we have two doors to come in here. There is a front door in this building and two side doors on the side of the building. Um, reason for that, let's say there's a function in the front room and you still want to attend dinner or some function in the other part of the building, you can have separate private entrances into the public spaces. So right now we're going to go ahead and walk in into one of the larger ballrooms in the building. So what we have done, we've gone from the outside into the inside here, and today this is what our staff uses as our conference room. But this would have been a large ballroom at the time of it being a tavern. The wall off to, my, to your right here is a modern wall. So this wall was built probably in, in early 20th century to make this ballroom into two separate living spaces. So you would have had a large living room here um, when the family lived here. But this would have been a large ballroom any of the taverns you go to from the colonial period up to the early American period would have these large rooms. Dancing was very important to Americans back then. Listening to music, dancing to that music, entertaining, um, having parties, weddings. Uh, we know George Washington and George Balls up at uh, one of our uh, French sites, Gaspers Tavern Museum. They have George Washington's birthday ball to celebrate George Washington. They would have had similar festivities here in Dumfries at this tavern. Um, the photographs, the images off to my right here, I think uh, we just scanned through, are people that are prominent that came to Dumfries at some point in time. The Lees, the Carters, the Graysons, um, all these Taylors, all these families had an important role here in the founding of Dumfries. Um, again, the town is founded by, by Scottish immigrants. A lot of land here is, is owned by Scot people over in Scotland that never make it over here, but are owning this land. Um, over across the seas, and most of the immigrants here were from, from Scotland. That's why you find a Dumfries in Virginia and a Dumfries in Scotland. And a lot of the streets up here in Dumfries uh, carry those names as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to walk you upstairs and show you some of the spaces that are very rarely seen by people. So everyone always wants to go upstairs and they come visit Williams Ordinary. Um, it's not that exciting. It's a storage space here for a lot of our collections that the county owns. Princeton County has several thousand pieces of historic artifacts that we are in charge to, to maintain and to interpret to the public. So we use the upstairs space as storage. It's also uh, some office space as well. But one thing I'll have you look at, if you look to the floor here, you can see where the floor has been patched at some point. So keep in mind, stairs in the 19th century were very 
tend to be very narrow and steep. So at some point, uh, probably when the family um, buys this building and turns it into a house, they put bedrooms up here, they rearrange the stairs and make it a little more accessible. So this is where the original stairs were here in the 1790 building. So uh, this building, if you, if you were able to spend some time looking at it, really tells you what it was used for and how it was used. We'll go into this room over here to your right. Again, a very large room today that, that we have used for our storage and offices, but I'll have the camera pan down. You can look into the floorboards here. You can see a series of where wall studs once went into the floor. So at some point, there was a wall put here. Um, keep in mind, a tavern serves several purposes. Tavern's gonna be a place to eat, a place to drink, a place to hang out, and a place to sleep. Um, early on in Virginia law, if you served alcohol, you had to provide bedroom spaces. So the tavern keeper here would provide bedrooms for you for a fee, of course. One thing I want to point out, though, is on the room on this side of the wall, you had a fireplace. Um, so this side would have had a fireplace. So maybe on a winter's day, this room might have been had a, a, a higher fee than the room on this side because you wouldn't have had a fireplace in your room. Um, as I said, the family really added all these different walls here to make these into bedroom spaces. We do have a couple of original doors. This is being one right here. Uh, this is, was the location of a door uh, that came into this bedroom space here out into the center hallway. Um, today, like I said, it's all been chopped up. The center hallway is no longer here. We'll walk back out here. I apologize, it's dark up here. But one thing I'll point out real quick is this is the center hallway. So the hallway ran from the steps down the length of the building. Um, if I could have Paige zoom in on the floor here, you can see where the, the studs for the wall were. So the hallway's here, bedrooms are off to the sides. Um, depending on which time period you're talking about, it depends on how many bedrooms there were. Um, some architects believe when this building was built, this was all open at one point, where you just had open bedroom spaces. Um, very little privacy, but they really weren't used to privacy at that time period. Today, if you went to a hotel and they gave you a big room to share with strangers, you probably would turn around and leave, but back then it was pretty common. And then as things change and social norms change, people expected more private bedrooms like we do today. So maybe that's when these walls are added in the center hallway here was the place where you could access all these rooms. Uh, but today it's an office space that um, we're very happy to use and take care of for Prince William County. The county bought this building in 2007. Um, and we've been in here since 2008 using it as our offices. Uh, the public is encouraged to come visit, but again, it's just, just an office space. Um, and we wanted to give a little bit of a behind the scenes tour of some of the spaces that you wouldn't normally see if you came into this building. So I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, please check out our YouTube page for more videos and virtual tours as we post them. And this is Rob Orson signing off saying thank you.